Aloha YouTube, it's your boy Crypto Roots. So at gumroad.com slash crypto roots. This is where you'll you'll find all my crypto courses, my crypto classes, crypto roots season one. I give you the best deals I can possibly give, as much value as I possibly can give. Um, holler at me if you want to pay me in Bitcoin or if you want to uh, be affiliate uh, marketer. You know what I'm saying? I'll pay you 20% commission if you sell my products on your website or whatnot. Now, if you're looking for a privacy-based browser, uh, Brave browser is what you definitely should download. They got a mobile wallet, um, no third parties. They got a, they want a basic attention token. You get paid to be advertised to. And you can also pay uh, content creators. If you're a content creator, definitely you should be using Brave browser. You know what I'm saying? You get a privacy email after you get your Brave browser. You get a Proton mail address. It's free. It's double encrypted. I've been using it uh, for over a couple years, and it's one of the best privacy emails out there. Um, they don't have access to your emails. Now, if you pay five dollars a month or even more, you get a Proton VPN, VPN, virtual private network. Do not get any free VPNs because they, ha they have to sell your data. Nothing comes for free. So you make sure you want to compensate these uh, these companies for. Uh, their time and energy and they don't need to sell your data so get a ProTime VPN now if you're looking to travel and you want to book hotel rooms you got a little extra crypto you've been trading the markets you can use Travala and they accept cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin Ethereum Litecoin you know what I'm saying and even they got their own coin so definitely look into that now if you're outside of the US I definitely say uh, you should get uh, register a Binance account you want to have access to this market it's still growing the Binance token is still going so I recommend you sign up for Binance links all the links are in the description much love family I got your back peace Aloha YouTube this is your boy Crypto Roots and we, we got some old game. We got some old crypto game. You know what I'm saying? I'm excited to be teaching. I've been studying. You know what I'm saying? I've been I've been applying the information. I just started mining a new crypto coin on my CPU. I'm excited about that. You know what I'm saying? Raven coin. Got that up and going. So that's good news. That's good news. I definitely support the project. So today, we're going to discuss game theory. Game game theory game theoretical you know what I'm saying incentivize competition a system it's a system of rewards and punishments and a lot of monetary money a lot of uh, the systems we live in today are based on the same type of game theory if you do this then this happens if you don't do this then this happens you know if you go to work you get paid if you don't go to work, you don't get paid. So that's kind of how a lot of structured economies and sort of governance models are kind of run is on some form or variation of game theory. Now, one of the biggest for, for, uh, types of, I would say, uh, immediate forms of game theory is when people get caught doing a crime. You have two different people who are doing a crime and or, and or didn't do a crime and they're they're in question they're separated in their questions they're separated so based on whether they don't want to get caught they're going to question how much is the other side going to agree with their story or going to sell them out so now the rules change now the calculations change about self-interest what and in, in, in a space of other people who are ultimately looking out for their self-interest how do you know what type of calculations do you got to come up with in your head so that you have the best possible outcome yourself knowing that other people also have want to have the best outcomes themselves so there's different kind of structures and ways and outcomes uh, of game theories and we're gonna go over them I know it's a lot and forgive me if I'm not being very precise but we're gonna go I'm a sh I got some slides for you you know what I'm saying so I got some slides so let's break it down and what does that mean when it comes to blockchain technology and how is that built into the Bitcoin system of blockchain because it, we wouldn't have this system of Bitcoin if it wasn't for game theory and certain aspects of uh, different types of game theory combined into one so let's get into it let's get into it 
All right. Now. Slides, people, slides. We teaching, we teaching. Game theory. You know what I'm saying? Got my meme over here. Check that out. That shit's still going past that shit. In fact, I'm gonna take I'm gonna take a quick hit, real quick. You know what I'm saying? Before we get into class, before we get into class, got a Coca Cola bottle, little Coca Cola bottle. Yo, marijuana helps me learn this shit. I'm not lying. I wouldn't. I wouldn't have been able to learn this much this so soon if it wasn't for smoking weed. So, y'all could say what y'all want out there, but, you know, I'm the one teaching right now. So, you know what I'm saying? So, pick up gang. Crypto roots. Slap shit so long. All right, what is game theory? Ready for some friendly competition. All right. Game theory is the study of how and why people make decisions within a competitive situation while keeping in mind what actions their competitors will take. You can think of it as the study of stra uh, stra strategic decision making, okay? A street strategic decision making, that's probably the great, great way to describe it. And I kind of like to be that kind of person, you know? So this is what interests me. All right, let's get into it. Different types of game theories. Prisoner's dilemma refers to a situation where two completely rational individuals might not cooperate, even if it appears that it's in their best interest to do so. Classic choice between self-interest and mutual interest. So like I said, you got two homeboys or two friends or two maybe not friends associated with each other, but somehow they end up getting separate and will they basically, will they snitch on each other? Or will they have each other's back? It's called the prisoner's dilemma, that's so to speak. Will they, will your partner snitch on you? Or will you snitch on your partner? Or will you both not snitch on each other? So it's called, that's a game, that's it. So when people are doing this, they're trying to see what they can do out of the two people and the decisions they make. And the people who are making the decisions are being very strategic based on other people. Uh, you know, I think this is interesting, very interesting. Coordination game. Game in which the players benefit from working together. There's no incentive for either party to cheat since it will result in worse outcome than cooperating. Example, driving on the right side of the road. Perfect. Perfect example. So, for if one person were to go against it, not only will that person be in jeopardy, a lot of other people will be in jeopardy. So, it's in everybody's best interest to play along. You see? You see where this is going when it comes to certain things with Bitcoin and blockchain and mining? So it's in their best interest to go along because if they didn't, then not only would it be tragic, possibly tragic for them, but for many other people. Free rider problem. Tragedy of commons. Problem in which every individual tries to reap the greatest benefit from a given resource, which harms others who can no longer enjoy the benefits. Examples, pollution, overfishing, and ocean garbage. Exactly, exactly. You're you're only caring about your yourself from the moment, and I and I can attest to this being traveling, and seeing how much trash is in other places where people like actually live. Like I've been to Hawaii, and I'm telling you, people from Hawaii litter more than the tourists. I've been to Mexico, and I've been to Guatemala, and Guatemala was like the worst. They litter in their own neighborhoods. More, and then now people have to live with everybody else's trash and now it's become the culture. So I understand like the, it's called a free rider problem tragic. No one's no, looking out for anyone else. Everybody's looking out for their own and you see what kind of environment that creates. Okay? Zero sum. Situation in which one person or group can win something only by causing another person or group to lose it. Examples, poker and gambling. Yeah, examples, zero sum. A lot of the government, corporate uh, type of entities, they play a zero sum game. It's either it's either all or nothing. It's either their way or the highway, essentially. You know, and you wanna be careful getting in these situations because more than likely you'll, you'll end up losing based on someone else's or you know, a group of people or whatever. So it's called a zero sum game. There can only be one and there's no other option, of, you know? And that can go on political levels, that can go on 
any 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 type of level of uh, society and, and groups of people dealing with each other. Principal agent problem. When one person, the agent, is allowed to make decisions on behalf of another person, the principal. In this situation, the agent will not prioritize the best interests of the principal, but will instead pursue his own goals. Politics. You know what I'm saying? Somebody, say, I, you know, I, I know. Somebody says they're going to look out for you. Somebody says they're going to do something for you. And you, you somehow trust them or end up doing business and they end up looking. I know I can attest to this and y'all know <laughs> I can attest to this. So prisoner agent problem. This is game theory. Okay? This is another form of game theory. Nash equilibrium. Optimal outcome where no player has an, an incentive to de deviate from his own strategy after considering an opponent's choice. Traffic lights. Okay? Optimal outcome. So, exactly. As soon as the decision's made, that's it. You got to stick with it. Otherwise, it becomes, uh, it becomes a, a bad situation for both parties. So, you have, you, basically, you have a time to decide what's the best outcome. And so do the other parties. And as soon as you guys decide, you need to stick with it. Grim Trigger. Strategy employed in a repeated non-cooperative game where you start by cooperating and continue to cooperate as long as everyone else cooperated in the past. If someone has defected, then you're defected forever. All right, Grim Trigger. Trying to think of some real examples of that, actually. Probably think of it a little later. Shelling points. Solution that people will tend to use in the absence of communication because it seems natural, special, or relevant to them. Examples, meaning at noon at Grand Central. Okay. Okay. These are the more, I would say, less common ones, but these are definitely something uh, I would say we experience once or twice, or at least know some examples of. Probably leave me some examples of Grim Trigger and Shelling Points in the comments. Okay. Canadian Beauty Contest. Analogy for investing that suggests that investors may guess what other investors are going to do and think opposed to what they think themselves. So yeah, it's kind of like following the crowd. You don't know. It's kind of like, especially in cryptocurrency, like you think like everybody's gonna go for something so it seems like everybody's going for something so you go for it even though you would never not normally go for it that's it's called I don't know why they call it a Canadian beauty contest that's it's an interesting bounded rationality when given a choice people will always follow a path that is simple and something they are used to even if it's not the most optimal that's yeah that's like sheep that's that's like the, the masses following the sheep they go with what they're comfortable with, even if it's harmful to them, you know? Just because that's what they're used to, you know? So they call that bounded rationality. I call it being the sheep, you know what I'm saying? Byze Byzantine general's problem. Situation where parties must agree on a single strategy in order to avoid complete failure. But where some of the involved parties are corrupt or disseminating false information or otherwise unreliable, this problem is built around an, an imaginary general who makes a decision to attack or retreat and must communicate the decisions to his lieutenants. A given number of these actors are traitors and they cannot be relied on properly communicate others with. So this is, this is exactly what Bitcoin pretty much solved was how do you get information to the right party knowing that there's other uh, people there to either interpret you, somehow uh, deceive you, Something, you know what I'm saying? So how do you communicate with people to strike at once, knowing that you have to pass information through very uh, potential risky routes or through actual risky parties? And this is where the whole cryptography, private key, elliptic curve uh, cryptography, this is where that SHA-256, uh, SHA, uh, SHA this is where that advanced cryptography comes in. And you have uh, the public key and the private key and the private key owner. It gets very deep, but it solves this problem because this is a problem we've been dealing with uh, since, uh, who knows, Caesar's, Rome's times, you know? Like, they're giving you a real, real example, and now we're able to solve this in the digital realm thanks to Bitcoin. So that's some really impressive stuff right there. I, I, I find that fascinating. I really do, you know? 
Yep, yeah, so how does this relate to cryptocurrency? The blockchain was designed in a way that is self-enforcing Nash equilibrium. So people get ready to decide what they're going to mine, what kind of mining equipment, what type of electricity they get ready. Incentives come into play to encourage participants to maintain the protocol and avoid the Byzantine general's problem. So you're in, so when it comes to Bitcoin, what you're, you, it costs money to mine cryptocurrency. It costs not only does it cost hardware, but it costs electricity and it costs maintenance. You know, for the most part, you don't, especially if you're running a bigger operation, you do kind of have to pay attention. And then there's mining pool fees as well, and then the fluctuation of the jurisdictions. So now you have all this. So you're staking, you're putting down a deposit essentially uh, to to mine, be a Bitcoin miner. And when you when you play along, the reason you're playing along is to get more back than you put down. But if you were to create invalid blocks or try to uh, do a 51% attack, if you were to try to uh, submit any bad blocks, you're taking the risk of everything you invested to be lost. And if that block gets rejected by the whole network, that cost you money. That cost you real world energy, you know? And that's what you lose. So it, 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 it benefits you, um, it behooves you to actually be a valid valid miner and to go along with the protocol. And that's what the, that's what the different forms of game theory are uh, uh, put in into the Bitcoin system. It's, it's beautiful, I can go on deeper, you know? Miners are incentivized to be good actors on the network. If miners want to earn rewards, they have to abide by the rules. Otherwise, miners lose time, electricity, and processing power cost. This is because mining has a recursive punishment system. Exactly. All right. So, like I said, you the whole time they have the freedom to do something wrong. The whole time. Right? Game theory and consensus mechanisms have successfully created incentives to coordinate people to make decisions that are in the best outcomes for the network. So the network has created this system that makes sure that people are incentivized to do the best they can for the best outcome of the network. It's genius. It's genius. It's absolutely genius. Right? Can't get caught <laughs> cheating if you don't cheat. That's straight up. That's straight up. You know? And so it's very hard to cheat the blockchain or very hard to make double spending attacks, you know? It's because too many, you would, you would have to spend, it, it's just not worthwhile doing so. Maybe on other blockchains, but definitely not on the major blockchains, you know? So I hope this gave you some deeper insight of game theory and how we use it every day when it comes to uh, incentivizing things, especially going to work, corporations, advertisements. They want you to do something and, and, some, and you want things done in your own best interest. And if you're a creator as well, you want to incentivize people. It's a, it's, it's a very interesting game but when you actually break down these terms and put it into context, it starts to open your mind. And then you, got, you start, to start to learn about these news, new ideas and then you, then you personally start to get to play with your own ideas once you get more advanced up into you know, decentralized governance, you know what I'm saying, and virtual economies. So yeah, crypto roots, man. I, I, I just hope y'all learn a little bit, you know what I'm saying, here and there, man. Holler at me for the uh, mentorship. Hit up my crypto courses, you know what I'm saying? If you want to keep going. And uh, I'm going to just keep, keep, keep spitting it. Keep spitting it. And I'm working hard in the background. Much love. Aloha. Peace.